Welcome to our Friday fellowship. I hope you are having a great day so far. But if you're not, today's passage will change that. Anyway, today's passage、um, gives us a number of ways to look at Jesus. Jesus as a pioneer or captain of salvation, as a brother who is not ashamed to call us his family, and as a high priest. Um, someone who has turned himself into a human to empathize with us. Anyway, I hope you will reflect on、uh, the scripture today, and、um, I hope that the scripture reminds us to respond to what God is trying to tell us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Bible study. Thank you, as we are not just. Free to hear, to listen, to study your word, 
but we are also free to gather as a church. Thank you for Sister Eunice for allowing her to prepare a reflective message. And Lord, as we go through today's um, scripture and pass or passage, I hope and pray that everyone will be blessed and that everyone will respond and take action to whatever you are trying to tell us through this message today. Thank you, Lord, and um, bless everyone through this message. In Jesus' name, this I pray, Amen. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in Him. Our memory verse this week is taken from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Tonight we will be discussing Hebrews chapter 2, verses 10 to 18. Now let us read verses 10 to 13. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given. Everything was made by him and for him. This gives a simple answer as to why he created the world. He created it for himself because it gives him pleasure and glory. Yet he desires to bring joy and salvation to others so that we can experience the full joy of knowing and serving God. This shows the harmonious doctrine of why we exist. We exist to glorify God. And we, as we glorify God, we have the most joy possible. Hence, the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him fully. To perfect the author of their salvation through sufferings, since, since Christ's divine nature was perfect already, it cannot be referring to this. A noted preacher, John MacArthur, says his human nature was perfected through obedience, including suffering in order that he might be an understanding high priest, an example for believers, and establish perfect righteousness. His humanity enabled him to bring many sons to glory. Christ is the captain of our salvation. The word captain literally means pioneer, or one who opens the way for others to follow. Christ gave up his glory to become man. He regained his glory when he arose and ascended to heaven. Now he shares that glory with all those who trust him for salvation. He is bringing many sons and daughters to glory. Now, in verses 11 to 13, we are called brothers and sisters of Christ. We have the same father. In the Old Testament, it says that the Messiah would preach to his brethren. Jesus himself said that those who obeyed God would be called his brothers and sisters. This reinforces the truth that everyone who comes to Christ is adopted into God's family. This is why we call other believers brothers and sisters, right? Christ is united to us and we are united to him. We are spiritually one. The writer quoted Psalm 22, verse 22, a messianic psalm, in which Christ refers to his church as his brethren. This means we and the Son of God share the same nature 
and belong to the same family. What a marvel of God's grace, right? One phrase in Hebrews 2 verse 10 ought to be discussed before we move on. Make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. This statement does not suggest that Jesus Jesus Christ was imperfect when he was here on earth. The word translated perfect means complete, effective, and adequate, right? Jesus could not have become an adequate savior and high priest had he not become a man here on earth to suffer and die, but rose again. Now let's read verses 14 to 16. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. So what can we see here? Angels cannot die. Jesus did not come to save angels. He came to save humans, us. This meant that he had to take on himself flesh and blood and become a man. Only then could he die through his death to defeat Satan. The word destroy does not mean annihilate, for it is obvious that Satan is still alive and busy. The word means render inoperative or make of no effect. Satan is not destroyed, but he is disarmed. In what sense did Satan have the power of death? The final authority of death, we must clarify, is in the hands of our God. Satan cannot, can only do that which is permitted by God, right? But because Satan is the author of sin, and sin brings death, in this sense, Satan exercises the power in the realm of death. But it is truly in the hands of God. Jesus called him a murderer. Satan uses the fear of death as a terrible weapon to gain control over the lives of people. His kingdom is one of darkness and death. We who trust in Jesus Christ have once and for all been delivered from Satan's authority and from the terrible fear of death. The death, burial, and resurrection of Christ have given us victory. Jesus Christ did not take on himself the nature of angels in order to save the fallen angels. Instead, he stood lower than that. He became a man. And not just man in general. He became a Jew, right? A part of the seed of Abraham. The Jews were despised and hated race, and yet our Lord became a Jew. Now let's read verses 17 to 18. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Being pure spirits who have never suffered, The angels can't identify with us in our weaknesses and needs, but Jesus can. While he was here on earth, he experienced the sinless infirmities of human nature. He knew what it was to be a helpless baby, a growing child, a maturing adolescent. He knew the experiences of weariness, hunger, and thirst, just like we did. He knew what it was like to be despised, rejected, to be lied about, and falsely accused. He experienced physical suffering and death. All of this was a part of his training for his heavenly ministry as high priest. Jesus Christ is both merciful and faithful. But how, you might ask. He is merciful toward people and faithful toward God. 
he can never fail in his priestly ministries. He made the necessary sacrifice for our sins so that we might be reconciled to God. He did not need to make a sacrifice for himself because he himself is sinless. But what happens when we who have been saved are actually tempted to sin? He stands ready to help us. He was tempted when he was here on earth, but no temptation even conquered him. Because he has defeated every enemy, he is able to give us that grace that we need to overcome temptation. Only Jesus Christ can do that. And he can do it because he became a man and suffered and died. It might be good at this point to explain the difference between our Lord's ministry as high priest and his ministry as advocate. As our high priest, our Lord is able to give us grace to keep us from sinning when we are tempted. And if we do sin, then he is our advocate. He represents us before the throne of God and forgives us when we sincerely confess our sins to him. As we study this book, we cannot help but be amazed at the grace and wisdom of God. From a human point of view, it would seem foolish for God to become man. Yet it was this very act of grace that made possible our salvation and all that goes with it. When Christ became man, he did not become inferior to angels. For in his human body, he accomplished something that angels can. He was an emphatic high priest because he went here on earth to also know how it was like to suffer like we did. The Lord made it possible for us to share in his glory. He is not ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters. Are we ashamed to call him Lord? Let us reflect upon these things as we have discussed Hebrews chapter 2, part 2. Now let's have our discussion time with our groups and reflect on these questions. Good evening! Thank you for joining our Friday Night Bible Study Care Group Fellowship. We have been learning from the book of Hebrews about the superiority of Christ. Please join us again next Friday night as we study chapter 3 with Brother Moses Tan. This passage will reveal how Jesus is greater than Moses. This Lord's Day that has come together to worship the Lord, we invite you to come at 9.30 a.m. as we break bread together in remembrance of our Lord Jesus. Our speaker, Brother Paul Paul's message, Ready or Not, is about learning to embrace change. Those who look to the Lord are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. God bless and stay safe.